I know how weird this is to say, but I'm hesitant to say that this is the last day of 2020. I mean, I know it, it is, and nothing that I'm going to say is going to change that. But the way this year is going, I feel like there's like a 10% chance that scientists are going to discover some previously unknown double leap year shit or something. And we're going to end up with a December 32nd just because that's how hard we can fuck ourselves this year. Right? I, okay, that seems impossible. But imagine that like somebody in Trump's inner circle just came up with this calendric Miss Havisham scheme where we just keep adding days to December so we never really reach Biden's inauguration. Given what 2020 has taught us about this world, how confident can we possibly be that that isn't going to happen? I mean, look, we, we, we have a bit of a habit of trying to assign personalities to years. You remember back in 2016 when everybody made a big deal about how many celebrities died that year, but then you go back and you look at the numbers and it was just a perfectly average number of celebrity deaths in 2016. It just happened that early in the year we got it in our collective heads that this was the dead celebrity year and it became a meme. And, you know, it's just like when you learn a new word and suddenly you encounter it everywhere. And it's not that it got more common, it's that you got more aware of it. And to some extent, that actually is what happened in 2020, right? I mean, a lot of people are doing the big breathless lists to summarize 2020 and they're including all the shit like wildfires and floods and murder hornets. But like, that's just the shit that happens in years, right? I'm not trying to downplay natural disasters, of course. They're terrible, but every year has them. As terrible as they are, they don't distinguish 2020 from any other year. So the, the idea that this year has just been one thing after another after another is true because that's how time works, right? At a certain point, we made a meme out of adding this list of shit that went wrong together. So it seems like it's a really long list. But that perception actually threatens to camouflage what actually went wrong with this year. So to be clear, 2020 was a historically terrible time to be alive, but it was because of two things, not some comedically bloated list. The first, obviously, is the pandemic. And the second, just as obviously, is Trump's malevolent form of anti-leadership. You know, he, he got worse every year of his presidency and thus every year was the worst year of his term. And when you couple that with the abnormally high stakes because of the first thing, you get the year that your grandkids will get sick of hearing you bitch about. And as tempting as it is to use this moment to bid it an unceremonious get the fuck out, I think it's more important than ever that we remind ourselves that New Year's Day is just an arbitrary spot on the calendar. I mean, it doesn't even have astronomical significance. I mean, I have no doubt that 2021 will be a better year. We, ha we have multiple vaccines now. Trump is out of office in a few weeks. Breath of the Wild 2 is supposed to come out. All solid advances. But there are also a lot of things about 2020 that cannot be undone. I mean, the most obvious, of course, are the deaths. Over a third of a million people just in the U.S., very nearly two million people worldwide. And let's be clear, the real numbers are almost certainly way higher than that. You know, when we start piecing these numbers together a decade from now and beyond, contrary to the conspiracy du jour, the real death toll from this pandemic will be considerably higher. But we lost a lot more than lives this year. We also forever lost that comforting illusion that deep down, most of us are good people. We're not. I mean, maybe a bare majority of us are, but even that's suspect at this point. What we know for sure is that way more people in this country are morally bankrupt than we were ever willing to admit before. I mean, we, we knew we were stupid, right? Like even the most patriotic homer in America had to admit that we were dumber than most countries. And, and that's how we explained Trump away in 2016. We convinced ourselves that we were just too stupid to see what he was and what he was going to do. But we couldn't use that excuse again in 2020. I mean, sure, Biden won, but his margin was nowhere near decisive enough to redeem us from the righteous judgment of history. And we can throw away this year's calendar or <laughs> beat it up with baseball bats and set it on fire, whatever you have to do. But we're never going to rid ourselves of the knowledge that more than a third of this country would burn it all down over their God-given right to hate gay people. You know, ultimately, when we look back on 2020 as a society, we'll probably try to blur that part out as much as we can. We're, we're going to dwell on the feel-good stories about communities coming together and medical workers persevering and normal people coping online. And we'll dutifully focus on all the people who died, but we won't focus on the people who killed them. We'll, we'll pretend that the anti-mask conspiracists were some tiny sliver of aberration rather than stuff like, you know, the entire town I live in. 
I mean, maybe when you, you and I are gone, historians will start being honest about this, but mostly we're going to avoid those uncomfortable facts so that we can get back to lying to ourselves about how our neighbors are good deep down. And of course, when I say we, I mean they. I am not talking about us. Because while everybody else tries to reduce this past year to cultural symbols like people wearing masks, you and I are going to remember it as a year when a lot of people took their masks off.